the first one that we're going to get into is again like uh we slowly went over is the g center is what is defined and there's a lot of openness surrounding so if you remember from last week we talked about the other big authorities right so they don't have their solar plexus they do not have their spleen self-projected also do not doesn't have their ego so it's just their g center up that is going to uh, have definition yeah yep so no, they, um, can, they can have a head center they can have head nausea defined yeah that, but that's the only other option that, exactly. Yep. So a lot of openness. So uh, a leading question for G Center or self-projected authority is, does this bring me closer to my life's decision? So this is appropriate because your G Center is kind of like your dowsing rod, right? It kind of takes you in the direction you're meant to go. So that's what you want to be leaning into. So how long it takes for you to make a decision, it can be immediate or however long it takes for you to get some clarity and the clarity comes usually by speaking things out loud literally and sharing that speaking with anybody speaking it to yourself and what's most important is as you're in interaction with the other which is what this is all about there's a certain spontaneity so all of these authorities that we have today have spontaneity as an important keynote because it's spontaneously what gets said so you're waiting to recognize you're still waiting for an invitation you're waiting to for this feeling of accomplishment to do a thing you're recognizing what systems you like to master and we have to really keep saying that they love to master systems it's really the thing it's a juice inside and their recognition of the question of you know they're always looking at into the other who are you who are you that's why they penetrate and sort of get into one-on-one -on -one and and they're penetrating or locks the other being in so while they're answering this question the spontaneity of what is said fluidically in the moment will lead them to more truth than 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 any amount of thinking that could be done uh, so like we uh, mentioned, so it comes from the G center, but what's interesting is the G center is connected to their throat, which is why you're you know, speaking out loud is so important. So it's coming through your identity, right? And let's say you're, you know, invited, pay attention to what are the words that come out of your mouth, right? Because that, again, spontaneously, yeah, spontaneous and yeah, immediate, yeah. right? That's coming straight yeah. from your G center, you know, connected to your throat. Um, it, the openness we kind of mentioned before. So there's a lack of motors, which means that because there's so many open centers, you are susceptible to have more conditioning than maybe some of the other. We get susceptible to conditioning. I mean, we're all totally susceptible, 100% susceptible to conditioning. And the susceptibility here is, is obviously in the amount of open centers taking in those very easily conditioned, not self voices for, for a self projected, ego projected or um, G center authority. So it's going to be the same for all of them. If that's their authority, then they're loaded down with openness and, you know, no connection to a sacral, obviously. Um, so they get burned out and they get conditioned. The um, clarity comes out, like we mentioned, when you when you verbalize, actually use your words, say things out loud. So all the, all the thoughts that are going around in your head, right, saying them out loud. So uh, there was a, a really great... Um, Maybe this is in a future slide, but you know, they, if the timing's right, Moana, if the timing is right, no, that's not because what I was to be say. so the thoughts picture it like a ball of like tangled up yarn, and when right. you say it, the yarn is straightening out and it's right. starting to make less absolutely. Yeah, sense. that's that's a great analogy, in fact. Um, and oh, and and what I was saying still. <laughs> Well, what I'm saying still, still, it applies greatly because it's it's about the timing of when when you're speaking, when you're feeling like you're feeling like interacting. It's the timing of it all. As soon as a, so, projectors know better than than the rest of us. Moana, you and I sometimes barely notice if the other isn't listening. Really, we'll pick it up. Don't get me wrong; we're not obtuse, but I'm just saying it's we don't <laughs> mind steamrolling over that, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, tell me if, yeah, we don't, trying to steamroll over it, obviously, if it goes on too long, it's the same. 
but but the projector is just keenly aware so think of all the time a projector spends not wanting to recognize that that the other tuned out or tunes out or never tunes in mm -hmm. um that what was i going to mention yes um so what's also interesting is to know it's not just the things you're saying but how you're saying it so the tone mm -hmm. is also a very very big giveaway um, that can help bring some like, oh, you know, why do I sound so deflated <laughs> when I talk about right. that? That can give you like, right. a lot of clues. So it's exactly right. All the whole experience, all the whole sensory experience, pay attention to all of it. And it's not like you have to pay attention hard because you're naturally, you know how to pay attention to yourself. It's just, that's the full sensory experience. Yep. yep. Right. Um, so the six step decision making guide to self projectors, uh, self projector projectors, <laughs> their decision. Uh, number one, you got to speak out loud and be honest. Don't try to sugarcoat. Uh, you know, just just say whatever's coming up uh, through your mind. Just and the more you talk, the more clarity that's going to come, and it the the more easy making that decision will be. Let the energy flow out like i mentioned through your voice right and, and yeah well and, and the the more you talk the obviously the better of a position and situation you're in you're in the right place because you're not going to be talking a ton and as soon as you start recognizing that it's no good and and if you are you're only hurting yourself and you're feeling that too you're feeling a nervous throat energy of what's the not self of the throat trying to uh, attract attention trying to make that attention mean something trying to mm -hmm. finagle the right attention on you so that you can express yourself if you've got an ego projecting this authority i mean if you've got a the g center projecting this authority you're projecting out your big giant ideas about love and direction and, and they're infused and sewn into everything that you're actually talking about. And it's minor because you could be talking about something that has nothing to do with something so big, but there it is. It's there. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, you're in the right place. Right. And the, the types of questions you want to ask yourself is like, you know, is this bringing me closer to my life purpose or my goals or the things that I'm passionate about or the things I believe in? So asking those kind of questions is going to help you know, start that conversation up for you. And then, you know, pay attention to the truth in your words. But um, a, a really good way to, you know, deal with this is have a friend listen as well. Because sometimes when you're talking, you might not be listening as closely, but your friend might be able to pick up something. Um, and again, what comes out spontaneously is what, you know, is your truth, right? And this is what's true, which harkens back to what's, what are the two maxims of law I'm always pointing out. I'd say it in every reading. I point it out whenever I can here. Seeing it fixes it. And the kid mm -hmm. is always right. Mm -hmm. Seeing it kills it. Seeing it kills the not self and the, and the difficulty. So seeing it kills it and the kid is always right. So that kid was spontaneous. And um, yeah. the degree to which they have stopped listening to that is the degree to which at first their family and then the parents and then later friends and others sort of didn't recognize them right and it again like you know danny said when sometimes uh, you were hit you were probably super chatty so you bring that back right bring that back keep talking keep listening until you start to actually feel a pull in your chest and your body that kind of like is saying yes thank you moana yeah towards you know that or it could be pushing you back and that could be like a, uh, maybe that's not such a good idea and of course all of us are human so you'll probably have some fear uh coming up depending on how big the decision is and when you're noticing the fear just keep talking through it <laughs> you don't let that stuff fester in your head you want to speak all of the fears out loud the more you talk through it even the fears the more they're going to dissipate and it the lastly, you know, the, the question you want to ask yourself is, does this align with my life? Does decisions? it align? Yeah. Right? yeah. Does it align? Life, life direction. <laughs> life direction. Yeah. Does it feel good? <laughs> Listen, and it, every type has this sort of keynoted phrase in it. Every type, there's a lot of fundamentals to, to all of the humans, regardless yeah. of the type. Does it feel good? 
Does it feel good? I mean, that is literally something that's just so overlooked and underplayed out there in the world. It's like, yeah, yeah, does it feel good? We did that in the 60s through the 80s, you know? It's like, got to move on. No, no, we're still there. Yeah, so. excellent. So our, our next uh, point to look at is, <laughs> I love this graphic, uh, <laughs> primary conditioning <laughs> for your G-Center authority, right? Is mm. you can feel like you talk too much. You're like, Oh, like, am I, am I too chatty? Am I, you know, am I boring people? Should I just stop talking? Uh, that could be uh, something that comes up for you. Um, also not wanting to be in the center of attention. You're like, no, no, no. Like, I'm okay back here. Like, I don't want to have people look. Or the me. opposite. Or the opposite oh. sometimes. The opposite sometimes. Yep. Uh, discomfort with public speaking. Like, maybe you're not okay to speak in front of a, you know, a group of people or feeling kind of needy, right? It's like, oh, I don't want people to feel like I'm leaning on them too much. Um, That's a good one, yeah. Uh, feeling like you don't have a sense of identity or you don't know your purpose, right? Uh, that's what this lovely graphic is supposed to symbolize. About. Absolutely, <laughs> the sense of being needy, the sense of the purpose, um, experiencing a sense of being well, the adrift part is just not understanding the timing. And I want to address this term up top where it says primary conditioning. What we're talking about is the primary, basically a lot is about the open throat center, uh, excuse me, about all the open centers, whereby this primary conditioning is the conditioning that's coming in that's causing you to feel this way because because you've been obstructed from your original strategy and authority, hence... Your mind is in charge. The mind treats the life like a wretched slave, and it thinks it's nice. I mean, this is like a comedy in a way. It thinks it's great. It's like, I'm working so hard for you, you know? <laughs> I know you have the best intentions, but it's not working. Best, so yeah, yeah. tips on, you know, how to, uh, you know, best work with this authority is if you start saying things like I feel I should or I suppose I can that is usually you shooting yourself into doing things that is probably not best for you uh, another thing that's great is write in your journal but then whatever you wrote read them out loud so that's really good that's a good idea like, what a good idea I'm a two four and I wouldn't even have thought about it. I have a defined throat you know, I wouldn't even have thought to say that. Thank you, Moana. Right. It's so sensitive. This is emotion. That's Moana's emotional intelligence going to these little oh, details and me so much making credit. sure it's not a quick snapshot. No, it's true. You're making sure you do what the emotional solar flix does. Dude, you take emotional and non-emotional people and take them to the same field and say, take us some landscape pictures. And four hours later, the emotional person has gone through every little possible way it could be taken. And 45 minutes later at most, the non-emotional very often is gone unless they started smoking and sat down or something. Um, <laughs> it's just, Damn, that's, I don't want anyone to feel left out. I have all left the authority out, dude, have just, their time. Um, and what take your, take day. your due, take your due, take your due. Right? Moana, you, all of us are, are important, no matter if yep. you're, you know, a part of the, the big two that we already covered or like the little ones, uh, that we're doing right now. Um, anywho, so a good way to prime your voice is talking about stuff that you love, right? I, I mean, maybe you're really into your breakfast that morning. I don't know. You went to a great brunch place, um, or you watched a really good movie. Just talk about it. Just, you know, da 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 da. And it's a good way to, again, prime that throat center. And when you're thinking about generating content uh, for work, you can also use a tape recorder. So just hit record. I mean, tape you recorder is your friend when this is your authority and this is your configuration. Tape recorder is your friend. Voice Take note. it around. Yep. You yep. use your full, tape, re full tape voice recorder. recorder. Yeah, nobody has voice yeah. recorders anymore. Tape recorder. I just phone. said tape recorder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I'm 58, so I'm allowed. <laughs> you just use your phone, people. You know what I mean. Anyway, some good habits and good housekeeping for our G Center friends is in the morning when you wake up, say out loud three intentions you have for the day. It's like today. Can I can I modify that too? Yes. Let's hear it. Uh, and uh, three and in, three intentions if you got them so basically say them if you got them and if you don't got them if you don't have three intentions say three things 
say two things, say some stuff, you know what I mean? Because the right-minded person might get all antsy about that and not have them and then suddenly off into the yonder they go oh, just yeah. say I mean, some it stuff it, yeah it could be anything it could be also simple things right Today, you'll know I because it feels good it'll yeah. feel good like, that's you know, the maybe point you're the type of person that is like i i like having a tidy house and be like you know what today i'm going to make sure to have all my dishes clean or do my floors you know what i mean it doesn't have to be like giant goals so Keep it, keep it simple and then visualize three things in the evening that you're grateful for. And like, you know, again, it could be small. There's a good I'm, thing. I'm grateful for yeah. the coffee I had. I'm grateful for my cat. I'm grateful that I have. No matter how coffee. stupid you think it is, no matter how stupid you think it is, especially if you're in a bad mood. And the whole experiment with that is recognize, you'll recognize I'm in a bad mood and you have a hard time saying those things. Or you'll start to recognize, oh my goodness, I'm actually good at saying those things. That's what your natural true self is. It's good at spotting the stuff it liked and and, and getting out of being bummed and so forth. Um, yep. Perfect. So, yep. Um, you know, verbal uh, self-talk. So affirmations, like, you know, whatever you want to embody, you can say that out loud. You can sing it. You can sing read it out sing loud. Sing it. All right about uh things that inspire you uh sing in the shower uh just practice using that sing that verb. favorite song that gives you goosebumps find that yeah. and sing it and, and sing it and sing it to yourself and sing it out loud and stuff just just do that and that way singing's always good because you can't really look like a weirdo for singing yeah exactly. <laughs> and, and again you can yeah. do it in the shower um and instead of doing a silent meditation actually try speaking things out loud right you could do mantras you can do affirmations whatever just you know don't keep it in your head you're already up in your head <laughs> just right just right right exactly um and use journal prompts like you know i passionately believe that or when i envision my ideal life i am fill in the blank the thing i care the most about right now fill it in and it's going to help you you know find that direction and again mantras uh recite when you're kind of feeling off balance right it's like you know i'm safe i'm secure or you know i know i'm loved whatever it you know does your thing there's a mantra in here that will be here for all these authorities i don't need to know i don't need to know i don't need to know yes that was i don't know it's the same thing with i don't need to be right i mean those two things sort of go together i don't need to be right i don't know if i'm wrong i don't need to know so now uh that concludes our self-projected friends 